Shabbat Shalom to the Mishpacha of Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak television show. Yes, this yes, is yes. the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. Yes, yes. Yes. And we will be starting on a uh, new lesson today. Let's start out in Mark, the seventh chapter. Mark, the seventh chapter. Mark, the seventh chapter. And the title of the lesson is, Did Yahweh Command Us to Eat Kosher? Hmm. Did Yahweh Command Us to Eat Kosher? Mark the seventh chapter. We want to read verses 24 to 27. Hallelujah. Mark the seventh chapter. Read verses 24 to 27. Praise him. Mark, the seventh chapter, and verses 24 to 27. Read. Mark, the seventh chapter, verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into a house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Verse 25, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Verse 27, but Yeshua said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. So now here is an encounter that Yahshua had in his life as a man. And it says there was a, a woman that came to him, and her, her daughter, verse 25, a certain uh, Isha, whose young bath had an unclean ruah, shamar of him, and came and fell at his feet. In 26, Aisha was a Goim, so she was a Caucasian, uh -huh. she was a Gentile, uh -huh. a Syrophoenician by Goim, and she besought him that he would cast forth the, the demon out of her back. Verse 27, but Yeshua mourned to her, let her man first be filled, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take her bands, lick them, and cast it unto the dogs. So Yahshua told this, uh, this uh, Caucasian, this Greek woman, he said, let the children, the children of Israel, that's what he's talking about, uh -huh. first be filled. She's looking for him to cast this, this devil out of her daughter. For it is not fit or suitable to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dog. So really, he's saying that he called this woman a, a, a dog. Yeah. But the point is that he is elevating Yahweh's children, he calls us his so children, we, we are the children of Israel, yes, Yahweh's children. And so he said that he gave his children bread, and they're supposed to fill up with this bread. So uh, read number one, um, Sister uh, Darak, where it, it tells us what this English word bread is about. It said Yeshua said to her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. What is this bread he's talking about? Let's look at it in the uh, Strong's Concordance. Oh, yeah. The English word bread is the Greek word found at Strong's Blue, Blue Letter Bible, number 740. Thayer's Greek lexicon defines bread as food composed of flour mixed with water and baked. The Israelites made bread in the form of an oblong or round cake as thick as one's thumb and as large up as a plate or platters hence it was not cut but broken and often loaves consecrated to jehovah on the bread used at at the love, love feast and the sacred supper as in Greek writings and like the Hebrew, bread can mean food of any kind or the food served to children. Bread can mean to take food, to eat, to take food supplied by one, to eat the food which one has procured for himself by his own labor, abstaining from the usual substance, 
substance or using it sparingly to be one's table companion and his familiar friend. All right, so so uh, here is saying that where, where in, in verse 27, Yeshua said unto this, this woman, this, this Greek, let the children first be filled, because it's not proper to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. So this children's bread it is talking about some, some literal bread, but at the same time it's talking about something else yeah, yeah. other than bread. Uh -huh. Let's go to Acts the 10th chapter. Uh -huh. So, so in the book of Mark, Yahshua said Yahweh's command is for the children to be filled yes. with his bread. Yes. And since the woman was looking to get this demon cast out of her daughter, she was looking for healing. Okay. So, so Yahweh said, let the, the, the children of Israel first be filled right, with this right. healing bread before the right, Gentiles. Right. They're supposed to get this first. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tenth chapter. We want to read um, first. Acts of 10th chapter. Hallelujah. We're going to read uh, verse 38, Acts. Praise. Maria. Chapter 10. Hallelujah. And verse 38 reads Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How Elohim anointed Yeshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. For Elohim was with him. So yeah, yeah. Are we talking about uh, Yahweh commanding that the, the children of Israel get this healing bread right, right. first yeah, right, right. before like the, the go we get it, before anybody yeah, yeah. else gets it. Yeah. So Acts 10 38 says, How Elohim anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with Ruach HaKadosh, with his power and with Mashel of power, with the spirit and with power, who went about doing toll. Yeah. What was the toll he was doing? Shalom and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Uh -huh. For El El Elohim was with him. Yeah, so yeah. this Greek woman was looking for Yeshua to cast out the, the devil yeah. out of her daughter. Tell that name, so Christ. then it said Yeshua, he, he obeyed Yahweh's commandment. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And he took it to the children of Israel first. Yes, yes. Said, no, right, Elohim right. Tell was that with him. So we can know. So this is what Yahshua did, because Elohim was with him. Uh, yeah. Go to John, the 11th chapter. John, or Yachanan, but Yahshua obeyed the command. Yes. And we said, let the children be filled with this, this bread. Right, right. Preach. John, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. John chapter 11. We want to read verses 33 to 34. Hallelujah. John, Hallelujah. Uh, I'm sorry, 33 to 44. Hallelujah. John chapter 11, and uh, I'm sure the Ruach is going to stop. Praise. Praise. John chapter 11, and let's start at verse 33, please. Praise John. John chapter 11 and verse 33. When Yeshua therefore saw her weeping, and the Hebrews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 34. And said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Master, come and see. All right, so now we're reading the factual account of when um, one of Yeshua's uh, disciples, Lazarus, uh, when he died. Uh -huh. And uh, Yeshua was trying to get to him, but he got detained because he was giving the, the children this healing yes. bread. Yes. And he got detained on the way. Yeah, yeah. And it says, and when Yeshua therefore saw this is Lazarus' sister uh, weeping, and Hayadim also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in Haruach and was troubled. And Amar, where have you laid him? And they marked him, Adon, come and see. So now they're going to show where he's laid in. But he, he, he groaned in his right, room. Right, right, right. Because he, he wanted to obey Yahweh, but he got detained. And, okay. Uh, 
But he Shall understood like when there heart? when there are delays, there are divine delays. Okay. Not like you're gonna miss anything. Yes. It's just Yahweh slowing stuff down. Shall like this, so that the, the, everything can converge yes. into the, uh, the proper time and the proper place. Yes. <laughs> All right. Praise verse, 35, verse 35. Verse 35. Yeshua wept. Verse 36. Then said the Hebrews, Behold, how he loved him. Praise the mighty God for his word. And this verse here reminds me of when I was um, growing up in the Methodist church. And now I understand, I didn't understand as a child. Okay. But, um, when we were in, in, in um, Bible class and in, in Sunday school, they would ask the children to stand up and say a verse from Scripture. And there were, you know, three or four little children. Now I understand, you could tell their parents were, weren't teaching them anything about the Bible. And they would, one of them would say this Scripture, Jesus wept. And then a couple of more would follow behind them. And now I realize how sad that was that they didn't know any right. other scripture. So uh, this, this just quickened me when it when it came Hallelujah. to mind when I was uh, studying. Said Yahshua wept. Then Amar Hayadim, behold, out here have him. So yeah, yeah, Yahshua, he had emotions, <clears throat> and he he uh, loved Lazarus, but at the same time he was groaning because in this fleshly body, right. there are emotions and things that that you have to deal with and keep under control. Yeah. Y'all right, right, tell her it is. And, 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 and even you'll pick up other people's emotions. I know, Yahweh right? helps you separate them. And you understand, oh, okay, I'm just picking that up. <laughs> yeah, tell her it is, right? That, that's not me. All right, verse 37. Verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Verse 38. Yeshua, therefore, again groaning in himself, mm. coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. All right, so praise the mighty Yah for his word. So we see Yahshua, he's grown two or three times yeah. now because when the Father is, is, is working things out with us, we know it's worked out. We just don't know the specifics of right, how right. it's worked Tell out. Here, right, so we can know. And so Yahshua didn't know he was going to be raising Lazarus from the dead. Right. And that was how it's going to be worked out. So he just groaned and keeping his flesh under control because once he heard Lazarus was sick, he's thinking, okay, I'll just get there. Right, and, right, right. And, you know, I, right. I, I, he, he, I will uh, raise him up from being sick. Right. So, but, but either way, He's trusting in Yahweh and just Hallelujah. relying on Yahweh Hallelujah. again Hallelujah. in this flesh body. I know, right? There's some stuff that, that <laughs> you've grown with, but yeah. you learn how to keep it under Hallelujah. control. Yeah. And some of them are, could not this Hallelujah. Adam, which opened the eyes of the blind, of course, know, right? even this Adam should not have died. Right. And then we see that, that here come Yahshua, he's groaning again. Like, yeah, right. I wanted to get here before he died. Yahshua, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a sword lay upon it. Verse 39. Verse 39. Yeshua said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said um, saith unto him, Master, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Verse 40. Yeshua said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. Hallelujah. All right, yes. that's the mighty Yah. So, so Yeshua, understanding that, yeah. that, Yah, that Yahweh had uh, told the Gentiles, look, this is the children's bread. Okay. They're supposed to get it first. And so now Yeshua had to, to, to check her, to, to get her to control her mouth. Right, Yeshua right. Mark, take ye away Hasur, Martha, Habath of him that was moot. Amar unto him, Adon, by this time he's thinking, for he has been moved for Yom. Yeshua Amar unto her, Amar I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, that thou shouldst see Hakabod yes, and yes. So you read up above in the verses to where um, they, him and Martha had a little conversation and, and, and um, 
Martha's saying something about, yeah, I know he'll be raised in the resurrection, okay, yeah, but yeah, Yeshua yeah. was on a different wavelength. Right. He's teaching them some, some different things here. Yes. And he's just letting them know, look, the children of Israel get that healing bread first. Oh, hallelujah. And he had to tell her, look, I, I said before, so you need to shut your mouth because you don't know what's going on. <laughs> right, right. And the best thing you can do is just be quiet and watch and see what Yahweh yes. is doing. Verse 41. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Yeshua lifted up his eyes and said, Abba, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Ah. Bless the mighty Yah for yes. his word. Now here's something that Yeshua was revealing to all of us. Yes. He said, then they took away our sword from the place where our mouth was laid. And Yeshua lift, lifted up his eyes and Amar, Abba, I told I thee that thou hast shamar me. Yes. So Yeshua already prayed for Lazarus's healing. Hallelujah. Before he got there. And, and he didn't know Lazarus was dead, but you read the account and, you, and you'll see where Yeshua watched his word to make sure that that didn't come out of his mouth. Right, right. We don't see where he prayed in these verses we're, we're reading here. Uh -huh. And you may not see where he, he prayed if you go up above and read the rest, rest of the facts. But Yeshua prayed and already asked Yahweh for that healing bread for Lazarus. Yeah. Before he even told Lazarus to come up and before he raised him from right, the right. dead. Yeah, right, right. All right, verse 42, he understood the process. Yes. Verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me always, yes. but because of the people which stand by, I said, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast said it. Yeah, so Hallelujah. now he's, he's Hallelujah. Uh, letting the Shemites know, the children of Israel know how to get this healing bread. Yes. They're supposed to get it first, how yeah. to receive that healing bread. And Yeshua said, okay, Father, I knew you heard me, but now he's saying in 42, and I yada that thou shamar me always. Yes. But because of how I am we stand by, I am it. Okay. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. So he said that for right. the people to understand he had already been in touch with Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. He had already received the healing for Lazarus before he said what he was going to say. Hallelujah. So he's explaining. That's why I said it. For the people that are standing by. Yes. So they can understand how this process yes. goes. Praise the mighty God. Yahweh said, commanded that the children be filled with the bread first. Yeah. But they got to understand how to be filled with the bread, eat the bread yeah. first. All right, verse 43. Verse 43. And when he thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with, about with a napkin. Yeshua saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. All right. So when Hallelujah. Yeshua had uh, Amar uh, spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He had already set it up. Yeah. Praying to Yahweh and got it all set up. Yes, that's it. And it says, and he that was moved came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Yeshua and Martha then, loose him and let him go. Yes. So he gave Lazarus the children's bread. Yeah, yeah. Go to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Matthew, or Matthew, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. The is Revelation now. The children's bread. Yes. Hallelujah, you, Daddy Yahweh. We want to we wanna know from this lesson that does, does that mean uh, healing is kosher? Matthew, the ninth chapter, you want to yeah. verse 19 to 22. Praise him. Matthew. Praise him. Chapter 9 and verses 19 to 22. Praise him. Matthew's chapter 9 and verse 19. And Yeshua rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. All right, bless the mighty God for his word. It says, Yeshua rose and uh, followed him and so did his disciples. And behold, the Isha, 
which was diseased with an issue of down 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, touched his zitzit, touched uh -huh. his fringes. Right. Verse 21. Verse 21. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Yes. Now you see this woman, yes. she's saying something out of her mouth. Right. She's setting the point where she's going to be, be filled with this, the children's bread that Yahweh has provided for her. Yeah, yeah. How she's going to receive it. For she amar within herself, uh -huh. if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. If I, if I, if I, if I can just touch, right. see, because the clothes we wear, it, it the anointing fills the clothes that we wear. They become a part of the clothes that we wear. Hallelujah. And it can help some people uh, when their uh, people pass on and, and some clothes are passed on or passed down. If if the person was a part of uh, Yahweh and, and, and the anointing is in the clothes, it can help them. Yeah, right, right, so we can help. Now if their anointing is, is not right then well, they're just they're just <laughs> right. wearing clothes. That's it. But it said, but she said within herself, uh -huh. self-talk. She talking to herself. This right. is all I got to do. Yahweh commanded that uh, the, the children of Israel get that healing bread. Yes, daddy. She said, all I have to do is just reach out I and know, touch. Right? That, that's how I'm going to get it. I shall be whole. Verse 22, Yahweh. now after 12 years. Mm -hmm. I know, right? But it depended on her. Yes. yes. She could have got healed in a day. All right, verse 22. Verse 22, but Yeshua turned him around about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So that seems like that's, that's a little backwards since she touched Yeshua and received healing. But Yeshua turned him about, and when he saw her, he amar back, be of told comfort. Thy immuna, yes, your belief, yes, had made you whole, even though she reached out to touch Yeshua. She got it for herself, and her Isha was made whole from that hour. Stay in the book of Matthew and go to the 14th chapter. But Yeshua is just giving the children of Israel the healing bread, like Yahweh commanded him to. Yeah, Matthew 14, we want to read verses uh, 34 to 36. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. And verses 34 to 36. Read. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 34. Matthew chapter 14. Oh, and Matthew verses, chapter. I'm sorry. Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. And verses 34 verse, to 36. Right verse 34. Yes. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gethsemane. Verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. Verse 36, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Hallelujah. So this, this, this is the thing that happened to the woman in yeah, the ninth yeah. chapter, yeah. it spread. Yeah. So that caused other people to say to themselves, well, if she touched him and she all received right. that, 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 that healing bread, then I can touch him. It says, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when Ha'adam of that place had Yada of him, uh -huh. what the, was being circulated about him and what he was doing, they sent out into all uh -huh. that country round about and brought up to him all that were diseased. Okay. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, touch those zit sits, touch the touch the, the fringes. Right, right. And as many as touched were made perfectly or divinely whole. Hallelujah. Why? Because they were they were believing Yahweh yeah. and they understood, hey, healing is the, the children's bread. I know, right? So go to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. So the children's healing bread for our natural bodies comes through Yahshua's death on Calvary. Okay. Go into 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. His death on the cross Providing healing bread reached back to Genesis and forward to yes. Revelation. First Kings, the 17th chapter. 
you try to act like uh, there was only healing in the, in the New Testament. I uh, know, right? <laughs> or if there was healing in the Old Testament, then it, wasn't, that it didn't really have anything to do with Yeshua. Right. Well, that's people in their, their finite mind. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we rely on the mind of Yahweh and Yeshua. Yes. Not uh, any man's finite mind. Now. First Kings, the 17th chapter. We want to read verses 17 to 24. Hallelujah. So now we're going to look at this healing bread Hallelujah. in the uh, Old Testament. Yahweh commanded that the children of Israel get it first. Yeah, right, bro. First so Kings know. chapter 17. Let's read verses 17 to 24. Praise God. First Kings chapter 17, verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath, breath left in him. Verse 18, and she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of Elohim? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? All right, bless to my ear for his word. It says, it came to pass after these things that Abban of Haisha, the mistress of Abiah, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no Neshima left in him. And she amarred to Aliyah, What have I to do with thee, O thou Adon of Elohim? Art thou come unto me to corral my hata'ah to remembrance and to slay my bond? Mm. So she didn't have her mouth working right. right. But either way, uh, Aliyah stepped in because he understood that the Yahweh provided this healing bread. Yeah. All right, verse 19. Verse 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid, laid him upon his own bed. Verse 20, and he cried unto Yahweh and said, O Yahweh my Elohim, thou hast, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son. Now here's a Leo in, in saying some stuff and, and he's trying to, he didn't understand what was happening. Right, right. He, he was not expecting this. Right. But he, he knew the right thing to do. It says, He amar unto her, Give me thy bond. And she took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto Yahweh and Amar, O Yahweh my Elohim, as thou brought this Ra upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her bond. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 21, he's trying to get some understanding right, about right. what's going on. All right, right. All right, verse 21. Verse 21, and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto Yahweh and said, O oh, Yahweh, my Elohim, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Right. Yeah, so yeah. nothing happened until all y'all got his mouth right. Right, right. right. And, 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 and so uh, it said, Aliyah stretched himself upon Hazakar three times and cried unto Yahweh and Amar, O Yahweh my Elohim, my mighty one, yeah. Atifala thee, let this man's nephesh come in unto him again. See, Yahweh can't do anything for you and me until we say what his word says. Yeah. You can complain all day long. You can right. tell Yahweh what's going wrong Yahweh all day right. long. Tell and you know. uh, had the devil throw you the biggest party yeah, in the right. world, but as long as you don't say what his word said. Uh -huh. So in one instance, Aliyah was saying the wrong thing, right. and now when he's saying, all right, let this child's soul come back into yeah, him yeah. again, now here Yahweh, he can perk up and respond. Yeah. Because he's saying his word, verse 22. Verse 22. And Yahweh heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Verse 23, and Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, thy son liveth. Bless the mighty Yah for his word. And Yahweh Shemar, the voice of Ali Yah. Why? Because he was saying his word. Yeah. Yahweh hears his words yes. when they are said. And he yes. responds, and our nephesh of Hazakar came into him again. And he revived. And Ali Yah took Haban and brought him down out of the chamber of Habayat and delivered him unto his M and Ali Omar, see thy ban kaya. Yeah, yeah. Your son lives. All right, verse 24. Verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, 
now by this I know that thou art a man of Elohim, and that the word of Yahweh is in thy mouth is true. Hallelujah. So, so now, yes, it and, is. and you got some people, uh, Yahweh said, an evil and adulterous generation looks after a sign. Huh. Uh, he, he was a man of Yahweh regardless. But now she's saying in Haisha Amar Taliyah, now by this Ayada that thou art Adam of Elohim, and then how the bar of Yahweh is in, in thy mouth is imminent. Yes. But Aliyah uh, had to get the word in his mouth. Right, right. But just because the result turned out like the woman thought it should, then, oh, now I know you're, right. you're a man of Yahweh. Remember years ago, let's go to James, the fifth chapter, uh, there was a brother that uh, came to the temple and um, uh, decided that uh, he would believe that, that uh, Yahweh was Elohim and that we were from Yahweh if we would go to um, this woman's house. And I forget what, what he said the child had. I don't know if she had um, uh, something where uh, the child couldn't walk. And he says, yeah, you know, so if you go to this, this, this my friend's house and heal her child, then I'll believe mm. and I'll, I'll you know, come and I'll be a part of the, the temple. Mm. But that's kind of what this, this woman is saying here. Right. So um, you don't have to pass a test like that. Right, right. Because number one, they're looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> when somebody gets healed, when you lay hands on people or when you pray for people and they get healed, it's not you. Right. Y'all right, right. It's y'all right. just respecting you saying his word. He's uh, merciful. Yeah. Uh, and he wants people to be healed. Yes, he, he does. He wants them to, to receive that, that healing bread. So you have people, oh, yeah. if, if they have a, what, a meeting or whatever, and they'll go to this big time minister, yeah. supposed to be good for you, and this one and that one, and be traveling all over the place. No, it's not any specific person. So like this, in bro. James, the fifth, chapter, James the fifth chapter, James the fifth chapter, and we want to read verses 14 to 15. So uh, Yahweh yeah. commanded his children to uh, be yeah. filled with the healing bread Praise. of uh, yeah. natural health. Praise. James, uh, yeah. the fifth chapter, and verses 14 to 15. Read. Praise on. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the congregation and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of Yahweh. Oh, verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and Yahweh shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Hallelujah. Yeah, so the, here's, here's uh, the way that you receive uh, the healing. Besides the woman reaching out and touching uh, Yahshua Zitzit, uh -huh. besides Aliyah, uh, overshadowing the child. Yep. It says, is any sick among you? Let him cry for the elders of Habayat or the temple and let them pull out or pray over him, anointing him with oil in Hashem of Yahweh. Well, you have a giver and you got a receiver. Uh -huh. We can uh, anoint people and we can um, uh, pour oil on them until they, they can slide down the street. <laughs> But if they don't understand that Yahweh has commanded the healing bread uh -huh. into their natural bodies and how to receive it, nothing will happen. And it's no reflection on you, but it takes a giver and it takes a receiver. Okay. So both people have to understand what Yahweh is doing and what the process is. And how Halal of Immunah shows Yeshua say the sick, and Yahweh shall raise him up. Right. So you're just being used as a vessel. That's it. Come back here, bro. And if he have committed hata, they shall be forgiven okay. him. Okay. When James uh, the fifth chapter, let's go to James the first chapter. So healing bread is one of Yahweh's gifts. James first chapter. Yahweh gives gifts to men. Uh huh. And he gives a, a lot of gifts to the children of Israel. Yes. James, the first chapter. Let's read verses 17 to 18. Hallelujah. James, chapter 1, and verses 17 to 18. Read. 
James chapter 1 and verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Yes. And cometh down from the yes, Father it does. of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither, sh neither shadow of turning. So whatever is good in, in your life or my life or anybody else's life, whether they're serving Yahweh or not, it came from Yahweh. Okay. I don't care if they worked 80 hours a week. Uh -huh. It came from Yahweh. Uh -huh. It says, every told gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from Ha'aba Akor, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So he's never going to send you anything bad. So when the world talks about tornadoes right, and hurricanes right. and all this other stuff, and it's an act of G-O-D, uh -huh. no, that's an act of a L-I-E. So, so, Yahweh didn't do it. Right, right. All right, verse 18. Verse 18. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So he's saying that of his own will, this is why he, he adopted us with Hadabar of Emmet, so we can know what the truth is. Yeah. And the truth is that the healing bread is one of his gifts. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So you are peculiar. You're different. Yes. You talk different. You think different. Oh, you you look right. different. And that's because Yahweh has begotten you. Hallelujah. And that's the yeah. same word as born from above or born again. Hallelujah. With the word of truth. Yes. And however much truth you get. That's how much born again you are. Hallelujah. Or down going down the road of being born again. Yeah, yeah. So Yahweh said eating bread is good for us. Yes, it is. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9th chapter. So yes, it it's is. not just good that healing bread, which is which is a spiritual thing, uh -huh. but um, he gave us natural bread, and that's a good gift that yeah, he yeah. gave us. 2 Corinthians. And he said, eating bread is good for us. 2 Corinthians 9th chapter. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to read one verse. Verse 10. Praise the mighty. 2 Corinthians yeah. chapter 9 and verse 10. Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Now he that ministered seed to the sower both ministered bread for your food and multiplied your seeds sown and increased the fruits of your righteousness. All right, so it's, now he that ministered seed to the sower ministered seed to the sower. Both Sharif, lechem for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your sadaqah. So Yahweh is the one that ministers seed to the sower. Uh -huh. And he's the one that gives you bread. Like the work just said, you can work 40 hours, uh, 80 hours a week. You can work 120 hours a week. The bottom line is, Yahweh's the one that's giving you that bread. Oh, yeah. I don't care if you went out and bought it yourself. Yahweh's the one that's giving you yeah, that yeah. bread. But eating bread is good for us. And bread has been a staple part of what men eat for thousands of years. Yeah. Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. And Yahweh's the one that told him eating bread is good for you. Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. Right. What we want to know from this lesson is did, did Yahweh say that's kosher? Praise the Maria. Did he command us to eat kosher? Hallelujah. Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. I'm going to read verses 9 to 11. Praise God. 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter. And in this, this modern age, they got all these kind of diets. And, well, you don't eat no bread. Right. You, you don't eat this. Right. You just eat meat. Um, <laughs> Yahweh's going to let us know what he told us to Hallelujah. eat. Hallelujah. But he said eating bread is good for us. And he even said in 2 Corinthians, he, he multiplies bread for your food. Yeah, yeah. That means bread to eat. 
But it's been a staple part of men's diet for thousands of years. Yes. And Yahweh told them. Just yes. says Yahweh. Go get these grades and make some bread. And then yes, just right. Just yes. says Yahweh. Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. Let's read verses 9 to 11. Please. Hallelujah. Second Samuel, chapter 9, verse 9. Then the king called to Ziba, Shaul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Shaul and to, and to all his house. Verse 10, Now therefore, thou, there, thou therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. That's the mighty God for his word. Oh, yeah. So here he is um, when uh, King Dawid was made king uh -huh. and he wanted to show kindness to the uh, house of Saul. And uh, it said, Then Hakim called to Ziba, Shaul's Ebed, and Amar unto him, I have given unto thy Adon's bond all that pertaineth to Shaul and to all his by it. Thou therefore and I bond and I Ebed shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy Adon bond may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's thy Adon bond shall eat and lick them always at my table. So here's King Dawid, uh -huh. and he understands lick them is, is good for him, natural bread. Right, right. Now Ziba had 15 bond and 20 Ebed. All right, verse 11. Verse 11, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my master the king had commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephisbosheth, Said, 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 the king, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. All right, praise the mighty God for his word. So he, here's King Dawid, and he said, Mephibosheth, he and Mephibosheth are going to eat some bread. Go to Psalms 139. So men have paired bread with meat to make sandwiches. Psalms 139. The sandwich is named after John Montague. He was the fourth Earl of Sandwich in England. He was an 18th century aristocrat. And it's said that he ordered his valet to bring him meat between two pieces of bread. So he continued playing cards without using a fork. And then he didn't want to get his cards greasy by eating the meat with his bare hands. Yeah, yeah. And then he told his servant to put the meat between two pieces of bread. <laughs> Psalms 139. So the sandwich began as a portable food in the Western world, and over time, it has become worldwide. But it used to be called bread and meat. Psalms 139. We want to read verses 13 to 14. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 139. Verses 13 and it reads. Psalms chapter 139 and verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Alright, so here is the, the psalmist. And he's saying, thou hast, he's talking about Yahweh has possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my in womb. So before the baby even came out, when Yahweh put the baby in there. Uh -huh. So here's the psalmist saying he understands how the process works. He understands that Yahweh knows more about him than he knows about himself. Yes. And Yahweh has to tell him about uh, himself. Who? Yeah. He said, I will halal thee, yes. for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, we are. And people say that, right? but they don't really understand what uh -huh. that means. Marvelous are thy works. Yes, they are. And that my nephesh knoweth Yamein well, yes. knoweth right well. Yes. But as we, we go through this, this lesson and, and asking the question, did, did Yahweh command us to eat kosher? then 
There are a lot of people that, that don't know their bodies. They're, they're not in touch with their natural bodies. Tell it like it is, Ross, so they have to know. This man said he's praising Yahweh because he's fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And that he knows right well. Yes. But a lot of people don't. I know, right? Go to Genesis, the third chapter. So man has corrupted the earth's soil. Yes, they have. So eating right foods today huh. may mean we need to take some in addition to what Yahweh has provided for, for man to, to, for the children of Israel or anybody to receive that, uh, that healing. Hey. Healing right. bread. Yeah, yeah. Genesis third chapter. We're gonna read verse 19. Uh, yeah. So because man has corrupted the earth, I know, right? Then the earth may not be fertile like it's supposed to be. Huh. Fertile soil. It's not. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19 reads. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and and unto dust shalt thou return. Now this goes along with Psalms 139. A lot of people you don't believe or don't understand that they came from the, the earth. They I'm came from right. dust. Psalms 139 said, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and that my soul knows right well. Yeah, yeah. And Genesis 3 and 19 says, In the sweat, sweat of thy face shall thou eat lechem. So here's Yahweh still telling you, all right, bread's good, but yeah. now you're going to have to, to till this soil to get the bread. <laughs> till thou return to the ground, for out of it what thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So man is made from the earth. Yeah, yeah. In order to stay healthy and not decline, we have to keep our original fertility. Yeah, yeah. From the ground. Which means you from the ground. Yeah. You keep your fertility by eating stuff from the ground. Yeah, right, right. Tell like it is. So we can Psalms know. 92. So uh, yeah. they call it organic. Mm. But really, all it is is the way Yahweh made it. Yeah, yeah. It plays a key role going to Psalm 92 in maintaining the soil for fertility of our bodies. Okay. See, if you, when you were in your mother's room, womb, like it said in Psalms 139, uh -huh. and she had her head on right, <laughs> she was eating the, the right foods right, right. for her body. But if she didn't, then she just ate whatever she <laughs> felt like she, yeah, yeah. she wanted to eat. And, and uh, to maintain that soil fertility, when the baby came out, that's why you have some babies come out, and some of them have like their lip didn't quite come together, uh -huh. what they call it, cleft yeah, lip, yeah. and, and uh, some of them come out, and, and the, what's this, the Shriners, they don't have all their arms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why? Because their parents didn't understand they're fearfully and wonderfully made. They didn't understand that they came from the dust. Right, right. And that in order to stay fertile, they have to feed their body what Yahweh said is supportive of that. Right. So right. the earth right. itself is fertile when it maintains its organic or Yahweh's matter and structure. All right. right and nutrient status All right. and they call it pH balance Psalms 92 and we want to read verses 12 to 15 Psalms Hallelujah. chapter 92 so, see Yahweh when we were in our mother's womb and she got the presence of mind uh -huh. like they tell the woman don't smoke and right, don't right. drink and all this stuff but if she's immature and, and don't really care uh -huh. but not so much don't care just ignorant. Right. Then it can have all kind of effects. Yes, it can. When baby's born, what, addicted to crack and mm -hmm. all kind of other stuff. Oh, yeah. So, Yahweh is showing us how to.
our bodies that fertile soil, just like the earth can be fertile soil. But in this life, stuff has to be maintained. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 92, let's read verses 12 to 15. Oh, yeah, yeah. Psalms chapter 92 and verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the, like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of Yahweh shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. Now this is what Yahweh is doing right now. And he calls his, his uh, people, the one that he has the children's bread for, uh, he calls them um, trees. Yeah. He said, Hasidic shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The righteous. Who's he talking about? He's talking about his children, the children of Israel. Shall flourish like the palm tree. Uh -huh. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. He's not talking about these little skinny, little, little twiggy tree. No, he's talking about some strong, tall trees. Okay. Some of the tallest trees in the world are the cedars in Lebanon. And palm trees, when they have all these hurricanes and stuff, I've heard that the palm tree can bend over yeah, so far yeah, and then come yeah, right yeah, back up. Yeah, yeah. All right, he said, this is how the righteous are. Supposed to be. Okay. Those that be planted in high by of Yahweh shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. Your trees, you're being planted. Uh-huh. Verse 40, 14. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourish. So Yahweh said there's Hallelujah. something that's supposed to be happening to, to these people that he's given the children's bread to. Uh-huh. And, and the lesson is that Yahweh command us to eat kosher. Okay. So, so what we're going to find out is, is Yahweh talking about eating kosher? Well, what is Yahweh talking about? He's talking about eating organic. Organic just means the way he made it. Okay. What he made. But he said, these righteous that are flourishing like a palm tree shall still bring forth fruit in yes. old age they shall be fat and flourishing yes. those yes, are not are. the ones you're supposed to see in these wheelchairs with people pushing them around uh -huh. those are not the ones that you're supposed to see where right, they right. got this thing where you, they put it on their stairs and then they sit in the chair right, and right. go up right y'all right right tell that like so we can know <laughs> man is made from the earth in order to stay healthy and not decline we have to keep our original fertility, okay. or our original organic status. Okay. And Yahweh brings babies here to where they can only eat organic stuff. Yeah, they yeah. can only eat fertile stuff. They don't have any teeth. Right, right. That's Yahweh protecting them. Yes. Verse 15. Yeah, verse 15. Yeah. Verse 15. To show that Yahweh is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Hallelujah. Just showing that, that Yahweh is good. Yeah. And, and how he's letting people know to show that Yahweh is Tommy. He is my sewer. Yeah. And there is no Belial in him. No. Nope. Deuteronomy 14th chapter. So Yahweh made our bodies fertile. The normal pH, Deuteronomy 14. The normal pH of our body is 7.0. Isn't that something? Mm. Holy day, every seven know, days. Right? And then number seven. Yeah, yeah. But it can go from 6.5 to 7.5 and still be fertile. Mm. Or still be healthy. Right, right. The pH is the measure of how acidic or alkaline our bodies are. I want to do the Rodney 14. If our body fluids are too acidic, which is 6.0 or lower, make me think about the mark of beef, 666. Uh -huh. We can open it up to cancers, uh -huh. diabetes, arthritis, and Parkinson's disease. Deuteronomy the 14th chapter. So when Yahweh said bread is good for you, and he commanded that the children of Israel get that, that bread first, then what man has found out is that there's something in natural bread. He always got something in his, his spiritual bread, but there's yeah, something yeah. in natural bread right. that is good for this earth body that Yahweh gave us. 
There's 13 vitamins that our body comes with, and Yahweh teaches us how to keep them. 13 vitamins that he put in this earth body. Hallelujah. Vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 26. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 26 reads, Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 26, And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before Yahweh thy Elohim, and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. Alright, so, so here is Yahweh just saying that, hey, Take your money and, and buy whatever it is that, that you want. But now, he also named some things here. Yeah. And we're going to find out in this lesson, does Yahweh command us to eat kosher? We're going to find out exactly what, what uh, that's talking about. Okay. He said, you take your money for whatever your nephew loved after. Oxen, sheep, wine, straw, coag, drink, or whatever your nephew's desire. You shall eat there before Yahweh to your Elohim and Sir Samak, you and your household. Okay. So he said, you, you don't have to deprive yourself. Go to Romans the seventh chapter. So we are to get most of our vitamins from the foods we eat. Okay. Which come from the earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah rah, rah, tell I These get, tell are I Yahweh's foods. Okay. Some think, quote unquote, kosher foods are the same as the, the right foods Yahweh huh. recorded as right. Go on to Romans the 7th chapter. According to www.blackwellpublishing.com, the word kosher, we've been asking this question throughout the lesson, did Yahweh command us to eat kosher? Huh. The word kosher, which means fit or proper, has become part of the American lexicon. Okay. Yet, the laws of kosher and their application in a modern industrial setting are often misunderstood. Yes, it is. Kosher has nothing to do with a rabbi blessing food, <laughs> but rather that the ingredients and the procedures are in accordance with the kosher law. The laws of kosher are to be found in the Bible, Leviticus, Hallelujah. and the Hallelujah. subsequent interpretive text of Jewish uh, law. Kosher food production is complex and interesting for it represents the nexus of Jewish uh, law, food production, and economics. Right, economics. It has been said that the laws of quote unquote kosher are found in the Bible in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. According to www.vocabulary.com, the word kosher literally means, quote, clean, unquote, or, quote, pure, unquote. Huh. Refers to food that has been ritually prepared or blessed huh. so it can be eaten by religious Jews. <laughs> it